Hey everyone! Well, in the last video we took care of them tail lights in the back and they turned out pretty good. So, in this video we're going to take care of something that's been bothering me ever since we got this car running good, and that's this. We don't want that doing that anymore, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a latch on it. That's what this guy's for. We're going to put that in there, and if we can, we're going to try to get some of the weather stripping in there, cushion that up a bit. So we don't get that banging anymore. All right, let's get into it. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Bloody hands break through the chains, go free me. Look if it's and hey, as a bonus in this video, we're gonna show you how I cleaned up this door handle. Got it looking a lot better than it was. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than what it was. We might dive into that as well. Now, obviously, the first step to this process is to open the door. There we go. That's the hole we're looking for right here. You can see we've got three screws that mount that on, and they come in the kit. So let's get those out and get started. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out the orientation of this new guy. Does it go like that? Does it go like that? I don't know. I can guarantee it doesn't go that way because then it won't hit our striker, which it's going to have to go like that to latch. So we know it sits in that way, but we also have to make sure this is for the right door and not the left door. Let's see if everything lines up, shall we? Nice access hole right there. Oh, look at that. All the screw holes are good. So I would say we're orientated properly. Okay, so let's have a look at what all the functions are on this guy here. So we're going to latch it. There you go. That's what happens when the door latches. So this one here, that's going to have a rod that goes up to your outside door handle. Try not to pinch my fingers while I do that. And that's what unlocks, unlatches the door. And this guy right here, there's two rods. One here, one here. One's gonna go up to your lock. I can't remember where the other one goes off the top of my head. And then there's this guy right on this side. This is your inside rod for your door handle to unlatch the door. You can see the mechanism right here. It'll slide down, unlock, unlatches. So inside door handle, outside door handle, or button in this case. And this is our locking mechanism right here. All right, let's get to getting this in. There's the hardware that comes with it. So here we got our three screws. Here, these little guys here, these go around the rods and they clip on. I'll show you a little bit later how those work. And that's what locks your rod in place so it doesn't go anywhere on us. Well, where did I put that contraption? I'm not going to just go and slam this door because we want to make sure that it's lined up. And if it's not lined up, it could be in for a world of hurt, which we don't want. So I'm just going to take it. And I, I have those snug, but not really tight. I'll just turn the camera for you here. And we're going to see if that hits our striker. Oh, yeah, that worked pretty good. The fun part comes in opening it. because we haven't put any of our rods in yet. There we go. All right. Well, that was relatively easy. Let's get the rods in next. I can see by the striker. We're not hitting it and leaving a mark on either the bottom or the top. We're just latching nice and straight. I don't feel any drag on it. It's just nice pressure and it's lining up really good. So we're going to call that good. All right. Let's get some rods in place so we can actually use the handles. So something we did do is we took the door handle rod, or this goes to the external handle, the button, and we cleaned it up in the old, uh, someone likes to call it the cheek poker, so the wire wheel on the bench grinder. What we're going to do is I'm going to scuff this a little bit with a scotch white pad, hit it with some wax and grease remover, and we're going to spray this with some clear coat so we can protect this, but we get it all shined back up, 
I'll show you what it did look like. So as a comparison, there we go. This one has not been cleaned up yet. This one has been. All right, here's the latch on the inside. We're gonna show you how one of these clips go. You can see it right there. And you're just gonna press it into the hole. I need both hands for this. Anyways, once it's fully installed, the rod will go in here and then this part will hook onto the rod and trap the rod. That's how they work. We'll show you that once the rod's finished drying. Okay, like I said, we've got the rod that we cleaned up. It's all in place. You get the clip right here. You can see how that kind of sits on the rod. It, we put the pin through there and then we bring the clip up and it hooks the rod and we follow that up to the door release. When you push that button, you can see that it's going to pull the rod. That in turn is going to pull the lever. So, in which, when we come over to here, there you go. That's what releases your door. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is we're going to work on our lock system. One of these, this one here, this will come up to our door lock right there. This one on this side, that'll come up the door and come out the hole here. Hello, right there. And that, that'll be our depression lock that you just use your finger to lock the door. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to, of course, take this guy right here and we're going to run the rod up to the front of the door so we so our internal door handle works. See here, to get these off, you just put a screwdriver in there, give it a little pressure, and that rod will just pull right out. And you're left with that little bracket, retainer, whatever you want to call it. Put it together, the rod goes in, you put it in like that. Whoops, can't get it on. Well, we just got to spin this around. There you go. Put your clip on. And then it locks the rod in place so it can't pull out. That's it, that's how these work, pretty simple. But I'm gonna to get to cleaning this rod up. This is our longest one. This is for the internal door handle. Got this nice sheath on it. We're just gonna slide that off for now. We can get that off without wrecking it. If not, we'll just pull it back, clean up the ends, pull it the other way, clean up this end, and we'll just have to put up with that. But we're gonna see if we can get this off. If we can, we'll clean this all up like I did the other one, get the sheathing back on it. There you go, we got the rest of the rods and we got this guide here that bolts on and allows this door rod for the inner door handle to slide back and forth. And this is our locking rod that you push down with your thumb. You can see the threaded end right there. You screw your little plastic thumb press on there. And this one goes to your key cylinder door lock. So we're just, we just coded them all. We're gonna let them dry and then we're gonna go get them installed. Okay, while we're in here, I would like to show you which way each one of these rod locks are oriented. So this is the outside of the door over here. You can see the door lock there. So that one right there, that goes right in facing that way. This one for the door lock goes that way. The same with the one for the push lock goes that way. The other one goes the other way. This one goes to your internal handle. It goes in that way. And, and there's not a lot of room there. You can get it in. You can pull that back and you can get it in. But because of that, it's almost easier to put these in while this is still out on the bench. And you might want to do that. You can do it in situ. I did, but for ease, I would recommend doing this on the bench. These take a little bit of effort to push these in. There you go, we got all the rods in place. You can see that this one is gonna go up to our door lock here. This one is our manual door lock. Goes up through the door. You can see it comes up right there. That's this guy. And this one here, that goes to our inner door handle. And I'm gonna give you a little tip about this one. If you look right there, okay, here's the back of the door right here right there we're going to follow that along to these two little spots right here that's where this guide goes in and it's going to hold on to that rod for the inner door handle which is going to go down to here so you can see it's running along here and it goes to there 
Yeah, that's that's a little ragged. I don't have a new one right now. We're going to have to get one and fix it up. For now, we'll just install it as is. I can always go in here later and fix that. Okay, let's get to getting this little clip in place. Okay, there you go. We get that little guide in place. So we now have pretty much a full functioning door. Let's go check it out. Okay, here you go. There's our door lock. We can get a solid lock. We shouldn't be able to open the door. Nope. Pull that up. It's now unlocked. We got door action. Fantastic. We'll get to put any other pieces on. I obviously don't have the lock for cylinder for the door yet. I haven't put the internal handle on. It's just a matter of finding those and putting them on. And then this door is fully functional. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get this weather stripping in here. That can be a little bit of a challenge. We'll go through that next. Like I said, next thing we're going to work on is the door seal. I'm on the driver's door because you get a little more access, a little more room to show everything. And here's the monster right here. Now, you might spend some time trying to figure out how this goes on. Does it go that way? Does it go that way? Does it go that way? There's a, but I'm going to show you that. One thing I want to explain about it is this looks like a rubber seal, but this seal isn't made out of just rubber. It's got some metal in here on this end and at the other end to stiffen this up for when you mount it. And you can also see that that hole is closed up. So you're going to have to pre-punch it there. Just push the screw through there. Done. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the other end and any other holes that are blocked. And then this seal's ready to go on the door. So this part, what you're looking for is it's going to go up in here. And here's the hardware that holds it on is screws like that. All right. And then this piece will go along here. It'll come along the bottom of the door. So as the seal comes around the bottom, you can see this lip on the bottom of the door right here. Right there. See this lip on the bottom of the door right there. The seal's actually going to attach that. And as you come around to the front of the door, you're going to see... There's a couple holes right near the bottom of it. See, there's a speaker hole. There's those two holes. And those should line up with that guy right there. So, before we get into putting the weather stripping on the door here, well, let's talk about that for a minute and the proper application and what it is. Now, a lot of people cringe when they're doing the weather stripping, myself included because it can be very messy especially if done wrong so what is weather stripping glue well this is basically a permatex it's the yellow and there is another one that i far prefer but i don't have any right now and that's the 3m black weather stripping adhesive but it is basically contact cement pretty much the same stuff as this and i'm going to prove that to you so there's a proper way to apply this and there's an improper way to apply this. Okay, let's talk about some of the things you're gonna need besides the glue. You're gonna need like something to apply it, a popsicle stick, plastic knife, plastic spoon, something like that. So what I have here is I have three pieces of old weather stripping that I've cleaned up and a metal panel. We're gonna bond each one of these to the panel. Two of them I'm gonna do more or less correct, but I'm gonna use the different glues. This is just ABS cement right here. And I'm going to use the weather stripping adhesive for one, use the ABS cement for the other, and I'm going to use this weather stripping adhesive and I'm going to apply it incorrectly to how a lot of people would attempt to do it. And we're going to see how the three different methods work out. The one that I'm going to apply, I'm going to apply incorrectly right now. We're going to open this up. We're going to come along. We're just going to run a bead. Just like that. And we're going to take our strip. We'll take the longest one so we get the best adhesion here. And we do have this little dip in here, which is going to affect it a little bit, but I'm just going to splat that down. Oh, look at that spread out. Oh, nice. Okay, that's on there. Now, a lot of people might be tempted to do it that way. Here's the other way we're going to do it. Again, we're going to take our bead, just a thin film. We're going to use our popsicle stick, our knife, our spoon, whatever we want. And we're going to smooth that out, just like that. I'm going to use the smallest piece here. We're going to do the same thing to it. Put a bead on there. We're going to smooth that out. Just a thin film. We're going to give it time to tack up. So the last one, 
we're just going to use the rubber cement here. Again, we're just going to put a film like that. The nice thing about this stuff is look how nice it lays down already, but you can see it's a little watery. We'll put a film on here. Again, we're going to let it tack up. That's it. Give that a few minutes. Okay, what we'll even put, even just bring it a little bit more right there. Okay, we're going to give that a few minutes to tack up. This one should be almost ready already. Now, what you can do is you can let these cure fully and then just put a little fresh layer on it to reactivate it. But we can touch it, we can see it's still a little, a little sticky, so we're gonna leave it for a minute. Okay, so it's been about three or four minutes. You can see with the stuff where I use the ABS, this stuff is fully cured. It's, it's not tacky at all. And even the stuff that came out of tube is pretty dry. A little bit of tack there. So we're gonna need to reactivate that a bit. Now we're gonna do it all with the automotive stuff, just to keep it consistent. Again, we're just gonna put a little bead on there that's going to reactivate the glue so that when we stick the two together, you should have it. Now make sure you get this exactly where you want it because it ain't going to move. There, that piece is on. Now this stuff, that's all tacky too. Same thing. That's perfectly dry. It's not going to activate at all. I'm going to take, take our, we're going to put just a little bit. Like we don't want, want much at all. We just need to activate the glue. I'm just going to run that on there. Not too much. That's the thing about using the ABS. It's a little too watery. And again, we're going to put that in place. Stick it down. So now we're going to give this a little bit of a test. Now this is just a light piece of metal. There's not much to it. And we're going to grab this first piece that we tacked on with the actual adhesive. And you can see we can easily pick up that metal. And that's on the side. Now this guy here I think it's a little wet and that's why you don't use this stuff. Now let's take the middle one. It's been on there the longest. <laughs> that didn't go as planned at all. <laughs> but anyways, I can see that it's trying to pull away. It's not going to last long. It will eventually just kind of pull off of there and give these a little more setup time. They're not coming off. Look at that one. Look at that. That's not going anywhere, it's fine. It's in sheer, it still won't pull off. And that one, same thing. If we leave it sit long enough, it'll eventually just hold on really good. So this, I can peel off pretty easily. This one takes a lot more effort. Yeah, <clears throat> okay, we got it. Came off pretty clean though. I guess I could have scuffed that to have a little more adhesion, but and this guy, same type of thing. So that's how you want to do it. Put a layer on each. Don't just put a glob down. Anyways, let's get to putting the weather stripping on the car now. Okay, we have our weather stripping laid out for the passenger door, the one that we were working on. You can see it's got two flat surfaces, one on this side and one on that side. These are the two that are going to glue down to the car, at least going down the side of the door. Once we get to the bottom, it's going to switch up a little bit. So I'm just going to take my, my glass, spray on glass cleaner. I'm just going to get, get that seal nice and clean. Okay, we're going to give the door the same treatment. So I'll head over to the door and do that. Okay, to prep this surface, because we do have to use some glue, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of glass cleaner to clean up the door surface and the seal. Get in there, make sure that's all nice and clean. Let it dry for a bit, because we're going to put the glue right along here and stick this to the door. Now you got to use the glue both sides. So you're going to have to put some on the door, and then you're going to have to put the other side on the seal, and it sets up pretty quick. So once it starts getting tacky, you're going to push them together. And we're going to do that all the way around the door until we get to the front, and then we're going to screw it down there too. So I'm just prepping everything, getting it ready to go. I've got our door surface clean and I've got our seal clean. And like I said, you gotta put this on both surfaces and I've got the weather stripping adhesive. However, I'm not very fond of this one because you get the nice 3M one, it's got a nice nozzle on it. 
This one doesn't, so it's going to be a little more messy. We're going to try it. Might have to revise our techniques or get something else to put it in, but let's give it a shot. So what I found best, what works best for applying this, we're just going to put some right there. Just like that. And we're going to take our finger and we're going to make a nice smooth layer like that. We're going to do the same thing on the seal. We don't want a big glob of this stuff. Just a nice thin layer. A little bit on my finger here. Put a little bit on the seal. A couple spots. And we'll add tack up a bit. Once it gets tacky, we're going to kind of push it into place. Just like that. We'll come back and clean it up a little bit later. But that should be good. You see that there's this little channel in the door right here. That's going to hook on that lip in the bottom. Just for ease of working on, I've put the car up in the air a bit so we can get under the door and show you what's going on. We're going to do this corner and up to about this point here is the next section we're going to do. I like to work with this in sections so we don't get too much going at one time and making a big mess. Not too bad. Comes along the bottom here. This front corner. And there's screwed on there. Okay, cool. And we'll just close our door, keep some pressure on that seal overnight, and then I'll come clean it up in tomorrow. And then I'll do the other side. Well, okay, now I did say, as a bonus, I would show you, take you through cleaning up one of these door handles. You can see this has a little bit of tarnishing here. It's not too bad on the top, but it's a little bit rough. And the same with a little bit of stuff here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to take some glass cleaner and just clean it up. Just going to get as much of the dirt off as we can. Just something to work with. And you can still see we still got some stuff here. It's not great. A little bit by the handle here. It's not great. So now I'm going to take my marine rubbing compound again. A bit. A little bit on a clean cloth. I'm just going to rub it in. Focus on the area that was heavily stained. We're going to start with a circular pattern. Once we get the circular pattern, we're going to start doing a straight line. So we don't want swirls. We want it to be, this might take a couple rounds. Not perfect, but it shined up really good. There's still a little bit here. I'll hit it again, see if we get some of that out. We'll do this end as well, but that's all I do. And if it doesn't come out with that, well, I might be looking at a new handle. those spots gone on right there. That's it. Do a little bit on the top side. Okay, and once we've got that done, then we'll work our way to a finer polish, a scratch remover, then a polish, and that cleans it up pretty good, honestly. That's all I did. So before we wrap this video up, I'd like to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the thumbs up, ring the bell, and by all means, leave some comments down below. Now, one of the things I learned while doing this is I think I would tackle the seal a little bit differently. I suspect if I put the glue on the seal where I want it, let it fully dry, and then put the glue on the door and apply the seal to the door, it would activate the glue on the seal and it would stick pretty much instantly. I'm going to try that on the other side, see how it goes. I'll update you in a future video if it did any better. It didn't. We'll just leave it as how I did it. It's a little bit messy. I want to try a few different ways to get that on a little cleaner. Don't have as much cleanup afterwards. But there we go. We're wrapping up the Mustang door. We got the door latch installed. We got the handle cleaned up. We got the seal on. There's some other stuff to do, but that has more to do with the windows. And we'll tackle that on another video. I'd like to thank you all for taking your time for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.